G'day folks. Well, this bit, we're going to dive into the oiling system on the Holden, early Holden V8s. Uh, I'm actually going to do some oiling modifications to the block. Um, and I want to show you guys, just in this video, where the oil goes, uh, distributes through the block into um, various parts and uh, and I'll explain the downfalls of it uh, and to sort of overcome it and turn it in I think we can really do something with this block in the oiling sense and really improve on it uh, there's a couple of little tricks that I know of uh, it's through come racing um, and I'm actually going to do another little couple of little tricks to it too that I've uh, seen done on other motors and there's no reason why I can't apply this uh, to this block to improve things. Uh, they don't have a mains oiling or a mains priority oiling system in them. Uh, it's funny you know they it goes through the camshaft first and then through to the uh, mains and these are known for spinning the bearings on con rods for uh, slightly well starvation and and I think I think we can uh, overcome it and I think we can really improve on this and and get some reliability back or durability uh, up in the big revs because that's where they really suffer guys it's not so much up to 5,000, 5,500, they seem to be pretty safe, but over that, when you're pushing that envelope, you're getting up around sort of six, 7,000 uh, plus, you've really got to have a, an oiling system really well sorted for longevity, guys, because at the end of the day, uh, that's what keeps your engine alive, basically. Um, I've done the modification to the sump, the oil pickup, I've modded my pump, so I've got good delivery of oil to the engine itself. But from then on, uh, there's a few, like I said, there's a few bits in there which are a bit suspect, and it's not going to be that hard to actually um, to get it where you want it, and a little bit more flow. That's what I'm sort of shooting for, and. Uh, yeah, I'm really keen to do this this time round. I was actually not going to bother with it, but now that I've sort of dived right into it in the last few weeks, guys, I haven't. Uh, I've just I've just really opened my eyes up. I've got an excellent understanding of the uh, block now and the, the way it sort of gets delivered. And yeah, we can overcome it and uh, improve on it. All right, guys, I'll take you for a little bit of a tour. I've um, turned this around so I can see I've strapped the uh, camera to the light so that might make life a little bit easier when I'm showing you. Okay, well that's my, this is actually the 355 block well I've got the, the stroker crank for it and uh, this had all the H-boom rods, forge pistons, the whole sort of workings of it but now I sort of want to improve the oiling system uh, the way it gets distributed through uh, the block and try and ensure some reliability guys because uh, at the end of the day we spend a lot of money on these motors and if you don't sort of pay attention to the oiling system on it and get an understanding uh, you're sort of wasting your money really if you uh, start uh, upping the revs on these and sort of Putting out a little bit of horsepower. All right. Now we've got this is the oil. This is where the pickup bolts to. Okay, we've got the motor upside down. Got the pickup tube comes along, and then runs up into the sump. Uh, we have from that point, we've, it runs runs back around, and it's about 120 ish degrees. It's got a bend in it, and I'll just flip it around and you'll get a bit of an idea of what it sort of looks like. Okay, we've got the bottom there, comes up from the sump, 
and then it comes up and there's 120 degree it's about that down to the the um, oil pump so we run an, it runs an external oil pump now this is really clever this uh, if you drain the oil out of your engine you're going to lose it up to about this point and it'll always have oil laying up in here back through to your pump so you never have to worry with these with this design of actually um, running out of oil or dragging oil out of the pump and not and, and you don't have to prime it back up again that's a brilliant design I know my BT50 they say that uh, when you drop the oil out of it don't leave it any more than around five or seven minutes before putting oil back into it because you can it, obviously it hasn't got sort of a design like this to um, to stop oil coming back out and uh, draining out the oil pump so this is an excellent design I actually last time I drained it out and I left it for a few days <laughs> put the filter back on it and I had oil pressure within about four seconds so it was fantastic all right and then from that point on guys okay once we go out of the pump or from the engine uh, into the pump from here we go back through this hole this is under pressure now okay so and they're 9 16 holes by the way or, or um, that's the diameter of them now we run down through here this is where a uh, Welsh plug was I've sort of pulled it out and we so we hit a 90 degree we go back along now I'll just rotate it back around okay so we come up we've got 90 degrees we go back and then we come along again we've got another 90 degrees and we go down and then we've got another 90 degrees and that runs along through to the lifter gallery okay so that's a nice big long tube along there uh, the gallery okay and there it is there on that so we've got so when we come up from the pump we've got one two three ninety degree bends before it can come along here and flood this gallery up now this is where it gets really really interesting I'll just flip it back over okay so this is the side of the of the gallery okay so as we flood this gallery we've got holes through number two three four five cam tunnel okay so we've got holes they come up and feed this annulus now this, this runs right around the whole uh, circumference of the camshaft on on the, th the four of them here okay then we've got another hole this is through to the this is the main bearing we've got another hole at the, under, at the bottom because this is upside down this is at the bottom of the um, cam tunnel and when you set a bearing up okay uh, hang on I'll show you this when you set a bearing up uh, that's it's set up like that so that's at the bottoms I should say so from that little hole there it goes right through to this part here okay if you get my drift so it actually goes like that it sits like that in the engine and the screwdriver at the bottom would go through it now so the oil coming up through that gallery that I explained earlier on this side uh, comes through this annulus and then it gets pumped up through the back of the bearing and feeds the main bearings so the cam bearing cops at first that's what I'm sort of getting at which which is not ideal but that's the way it is now we haven't even got any oil across to this side uh, gallery yet it feeds this side 
but on this side, the only hole that feeds the other side galley is, it's there, there it is, that's it there. So we've got the, this side here is getting filled first from the oil pump, then it has to bleed right through under that bearing, or around the top of it to get through, to this side. And then it has to fill up this side galley before we can prime up our lifters and feed, get this, feed this bearing last. So this basically is the last uh, cam bearing that gets oil because it has to bleed through number four, one, two, three, four, number four cam tunnel for oil to come through here, fill up this side galley, then once it's filled up, we'll get oil come out of here to feed the number one cam bearing. It's absolutely, it's bizarre, it really is bizarre. So, but there's ways around it guys, to, uh, to fix it and to really help on um, getting oil to this side a lot quicker, getting oil uh, pretty much straight away to this one, to this bearing, but I'll go into depth on the next video for that. So that's what it is guys. Now this number one, number one mains actually gets fed fairly quickly. We'll run the screwdriver down through to here and it comes right into here. So we get number one main bearing is pretty pretty much fed instantly uh, there. So it doesn't have to go through through the cam tunnel or through the cam annulus to to get fed number one. But the rest of them Number two, three, four, and five have to work their way up from the cam bearing around the back of it and get fed that way. So that's what I'm saying. It's not a mains priority oiling system. So, but there are some tricks that I'm going to do to this to try and get uh, maximise oil flow and try and fill this side galley sooner so we can basically get oil pretty much straight to our number one cam bearing and I'll show you that on the next video guys it's uh, gee, it's, an, it's, an, it's a really it's a strange little setup the way it all sort of works but you know it is what it is uh, I have hope for this little motor, you know, like for this oiling system. It's just a matter of um, working it all out and understanding where we can improve it. I won't give it away now, guys, because I hope you can just sort of get your head around the oiling system, how it works. But I'll pop one up very soon on what I'm going to do to improve flow. We're going to block off a few other bits to it. We're going to open up a, a couple other bit of drilling involved so we can really maximize where the oil has to, where we want the oil to travel first and to start flooding uh, components first so we don't starve them and uh, we can have good oil flow. And that's what the key is going to be with this block uh, is flow. So be a bit of work in it but I think it's going to be well worth the effort, guys. All right, folks. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little tour of the oil galleries of the old Holden V8. It's not that hard, not technical, but if you take the time to sort of look at it, you can understand where it all sort of works and, and where the oil travels to various components. Uh, and it does make life easy if you get an... Well, then you get an understanding of how to, uh, to fix the little the little niggles that uh, present with these old motors. Alright folks, I'll pop one up soon. Catch you later.